Alrighty, hello, Mike Ritzema here with i3 Business Solutions, uh, along with Grace Shim, our marketing specialist, who is going to really carry a lot of the load today. And this year in 2022, we're going to work hard to deliver uh, more value to the community on everything from cybersecurity to productivity and profitability for small business and organizations in America and certainly the state of Michigan. We'll do this with a, a podcast, a webinar concept. And today I'll be dialoguing with Grace Shim about easy tips on using Microsoft Forms and creating surveys for employees and uh, clients. So can you believe I would submit to you that if you're using SurveyMonkey, you know if you've heard me ever before, I'm all about systems and platforms. And if you are using Office 365, Microsoft Office 365, then you have surveys built right into it. And as you create these forms, these surveys, they're forever in the content of your Office 365 environment. You can easily find them. They're very secure also. And that's what we're gonna be talking about uh, with Grace here today. Systems and platforms and railing against islands of information. So Grace, uh, let's get started. What's, uh, what's your concept? What's your idea on forms and surveys for employees and clients? Hi everyone, welcome to our first webinar of the year. Like Mike said, you know, if you use SurveyMonkey or you've heard of Google Forms, they are not integrated with your Microsoft account. So if you use Outlook for your work environment, then we would highly suggest to use Microsoft Forms because it's very safe and very quick to use. Today, I'll first go over how to create a simple poll within your Outlook email, and then I'll go through a step-by-step -step tutorial for how to create a longer survey on Microsoft. Then we'll finish off with a couple cybersecurity tips and give you a Q&A session at the end. So you might be wondering, what does she mean when she says a quick poll in Outlook? So sometimes you don't want to send too long of a survey to employees or clients because they would have to click on a link and then go to their browser and fill out a survey. So the best option for that would be to send a poll within an email. And some scenarios where you would need to do this is when you want to decide on a menu for a company lunch on a Friday, you want to get some quick ideas, then you send to employees with a few options as multiple choice, and they would be able to click on whichever menu they prefer without having to click on an external link. Another idea is asking a group of people which day of the week works best for them for a networking session. So the options would be Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, and they can choose that. And a third idea is when you have a new employee and you want to ask them what size t-shirt they would want for the company. So I'll show you how to do that. You first have to go to your Outlook inbox and depending on which version of Outlook you have, this might look slightly different, but you click new message to compose a new email and then along your toolbar, it might be at the top or the bottom, select poll. And if you don't see this in your Outlook, then click on the ellipses here, and then in the drop-down menu, there should be a poll option. So once you click on that, a panel will appear on the side, and you'll be able to submit or fill out the question and the multiple choice answers. And once you've completed that, you can add to email. So you click on this button over here, and within your email draft, it's going to look like this. So it'll say, dear employee, which size would you like to order, view or vote in browser? And on the receiving end, once you send the email, the employee will see this type of poll. So they don't have to click on a link unless they want to. They can just fill out the survey right over here and they can vote. And on your side, you can view the results as the results are coming in. So that's how you send your first Outlook email poll. Beautiful. Thank you, Grace. Actually, I'm gonna mm -hmm. I'm gonna share my screen a minute. Go ahead. Yeah, if, if I get the chance. And uh, it's over here. So in Outlook, the desktop client for me, when I created mm -hmm. a new email, uh, it's in the insert 
and then here's the poll. Yes. And when I mm -hmm. clicked on poll, it popped up on the right here, and I can create the questions. Correct? Yes. Thanks for showing that, Mike. Yeah. And then, yeah, I think sometimes, you know, we're going to do a social event. We've got a ski trip coming up. And, mm -hmm. and the way I do it, because I'm an amateur and I'm not comfortable with polls, is, uh, you know, hey, what works best? You know, next Saturday, the following Saturday, three mm -hmm. bullets, and then people reply. It's a mess. I mean, uh, how, how do you get the results to this thing, Grace? So as people start filling it out, you can go to that same email, go under sent emails, and then if you look on results, click on results. I'll share my screen again. Mm -hmm. So if you go to the same email, you view results. Once you click on that, then the percentages of what people voted for will appear right over here. Yeah, that's been that's that's been exactly my fear of polls in the past. Is yeah, I can create the thing, but what if I can't find the result? Can I? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, the best part about this is you never have to leave Outlook to get yeah. all of these results. Stay in Outlook and do polls. I'm going to take a risk in the future. I'm going to take a run at polls mm -hmm. instead of sending a bulleted email and trying to figure it out that way. Right. <laughs> Sometimes you want a longer survey, so that's when you actually go and use Microsoft Forms. So all you have to do is go to any browser, select forms.microsoft.com, and this is what it's going to look like. You click New Form at the top of the page, and this is what it'll look like. And before you start uh, filling out your title and your questions, I would suggest that you start with the theme. So if you look here on the top right, there is a theme button. You click on this, then Microsoft gives you plenty of options. There's templates that you can use for parties, graduation, office surveys, there's colors, uh, but you can also customize your theme at the, with this button right over here at the bottom. So I'll show you what that would look like. I put a picture of Grand Rapids at the back over here. But some ideas that I can suggest is you can upload a team photo at, in the background. You can upload your logo, your brand colors, any type of photo that you like. Now, after you selected your theme and your colors, you can get started on filling out all sections like the title, the short description, and then your questions. So the example that I put today is an employee feedback survey. Here's the title. The, our team would like to better support you. Please take three minutes to answer the following questions. And Microsoft gives you so many options. So the type of questions you can ask are multiple choice questions. You can ask short or long form text questions. You can ask ratings, dates, rankings. You can even ask people to upload files from their own computers. And you can ask net promoter scores, which are the type of questions that ask you uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate a certain thing? So you have plenty of options. And some examples of what type of questions you could ask are, you know, when was your first day of work? If you're curious about that and you want that data, people can click on this calendar icon on the side and select their date. You can also ask, how likely are you to recommend this role to your family member or friend? People can vote not at all likely, extremely likely, likely on a scale of zero to 10. Uh, a fun one is, how would you rate the lunches provided at work on Fridays? People can select one star, two star, five stars. And I thought this was really cool too. So let's say you're on the social media team of a company. You can ask, have you taken any photos of the team social outings or events this year? If so, could you please upload the you know, JPEG or PNG file from your phone and upload it to us? And then for us, a lot of times we try to end our surveys with an open-ended question. And this is where you can use the long form text question format. So it is fascinating, Grace, mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, I'm watching you here and I haven't done surveys in Microsoft Office 365 at all. You have, you've mm -hmm. done a great job of it, but 
I mean, things have changed from two years ago when we talked about this. The roadmap, I mean, many say that Microsoft is a version two company. And also many say that uh, Microsoft never comes up with anything new. Uh, mm -hmm. So again, SurveyMonkey, oftentimes there's more mature products out there and it takes Microsoft a while to catch up. And you're demonstrating that forms have come a long way and they're catching up with SurveyMonkey. And then again, I think part of your point is it's in one platform. You can find it in mm -hmm. the future and it's very secure, therefore. For sure. It's really useful. There's so many more tools that I'm going over in just a minute. So next, uh, you can also, for every single question, you have the option to format these questions however you want. So you can make certain questions very large, the text really large or colorful. You can highlight them, you can bold, italicize, bullet point your questions, etc. So it really is very customizable. And next, I'm gonna go over branching. So. You might have not heard of this before, but Microsoft Forms gives you an option to ask conditional questions. So for every question, if you go on the corner over here, select options and click branching, what this will allow you to do is create custom follow-up questions depending on which answer a user selects. So I'll show you what that looks like. Once you click add branching right over here, Forms will give you an option to lead users to specific questions after every response. So for this example question, it's asking, how did you find your current role at your company? Then if someone selects college job fair, you can ask a follow-up question of asking which job fair was it? Can you state which date it was? Can you state which campus it was? And then if they don't select this, then they go straight to the next question instead of a follow-up question. So that's how branching works. And it's a new tool that Microsoft added last year, I believe. Yeah, another example of the maturity of the product, uh, mm -hmm. you know, branching out in questions to get more information. Mm -hmm. And one last thing that you can do to customize your questions is to insert media. You have so many options for this as well, I'll show you. They allow you to search on Bing for publicly available photos. So let's say maybe you're looking for a company logo, then you can just search for that logo on Bing. But you can also upload from your OneDrive cloud folder and you can upload from your local folder as well. So that's a really nice tool. You can add videos or YouTube videos if you want for every single question, if necessary. <laughs> so once you have those questions completed, don't forget to go to settings. At the top right over here, you click on settings and you have to specify the privacy level. Uh, you have the option to make the form anonymous or not and make sure only one response is accepted per person or you can set that anyone in the whole internet can respond. Another option is to specify start date, end dates. You can show a progress bar. So at the bottom, you can show if it's a really long survey, you want to help people know how far they've gotten along on the survey. You can customize your thank you message at the end, and you can select whether or not you get a notification every time someone responds to your survey. Nice progress mm -hmm. bar, the most important part mm -hmm. of any survey. Right. So after you do your set, you complete your settings, you want to share the survey now that you've completed it. So you click on this big share button and what will show up is a link that you can share with your customers or your employees. And you can even shorten the URL so it's not this giant URL you're sending out. Or you can get a QR code. And I found that QR codes come in handy when you want to print out the survey so that people at your office, when they're there in person, they can just scan the QR code and then it'll pop up on their phones so they can fill out the survey on their mobile devices if they want to. Lastly, if you want to work on this survey together with your teammates, then you can share a collaboration link. 
even under this collaboration link, you can specify people in your organization or anyone who has a link is able to edit. Now that you send out you sent out your survey, uh, it's gonna on the responses tab on the right over here, forms will update live time as the survey responses come in and you'll be able to see how many responses, the average time it took to complete and whether or not the survey is currently active if the due date hasn't been reached yet. So uh, that's how you view results. And if you want to export this data, all you have to do is click open in Excel in this corner over here and your browser will start <clears throat> downloading this data. And I was thinking if you're not a spreadsheet type of person, that's okay too, because they give you an option to get a summary link that will summarize all your responses into one neat page, or you can get a printout as well. Wow. Forms is much more powerful, continues to get mm -hmm. better and better. Okay, so this is an example of a recent survey we sent out for clients to get some feedback. And Mike, if you want to go over the questions we asked, go ahead. Yeah, so uh, just a pretty straightforward survey that we did, uh, nine questions that Grace put together. We sent out to inform us about how our services and what we should focus on in 2022. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, Grace, if you'll go to the response tab. Mm -hmm. And you can see that we got 35 responses, which is a good sampling. And what I like about it is uh, the first question was, what's the number one reason you continue to do business with us? And we got a bunch of responses, 35 responses. And uh, the forms automatically creates a word cloud there. So that's that's a wonderful graphic. And we actually have our kickoff meeting for the year coming up and we did took screenshots of this and put it right mm -hmm. in the kickoff meeting. And what should we focus on in 2022? And the answer is right there. Pl please rank I3 services that are most important. And you can see the chart there. And uh, number one is reliability uptime. Just keep me up and running. And then secondly, the support center, help me when I need help. So mm -hmm. this is a good example of a powerful survey that gave, gave us good information in a very graphical format also. So forms comes really, uh, comes together nicely from Microsoft. Yep, and like I said, mentioned earlier, in, instead of opening an Excel, you can get a summary link. And if you copy and paste this link into your browser, it'll create a summary page that you can share with anyone you want. Very nice, very nice. Mm -hmm. Powerful, Grace, well done. It is powerful. Good overview of forms and surveys and how, how we can keep our information uh, in one repository, one platform, one system, Microsoft mm -hmm. 365. So that's how you create a survey on Microsoft Forms in, in less than 10 minutes if you want to. And lastly, we're going to go over some cybersecurity tips just to wrap it up. Uh, so no matter what position you are in the company, you should always be as educated and as updated on possible on cybersecurity and phishing education. There are so many phishing emails out there, as you might know, especially ones that have links to surveys that hand out gift cards or surveys that that looks like they're from the CEO of the company when in fact they're from cyber criminals. So that is your number one priority. And the second priority that you should keep in mind is to turn on two-factor authentication so hackers don't have access to your Microsoft account, which has all your employee and survey data. Do you have any other? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's any exactly other recommendations. It, mm -hmm. Perfect. Employee, the, the human firewall is the most vulnerable firewall we have. The mistakes. I was actually talking to my wife this morning, and our personal emails were getting more and more spam. And it's amazing how uh, how, how they look real, but they're coming from at gmail.com.
clearly that spam. Just delete that junk. So mm-hmm. learning, learning these things, uh, educating the human firewall is number one. And then secondly, two-factor authentication. I implore you, any small business, please turn on two-factor authentication. Within Office 365, a third one is ATP, Advanced Threat Protection, now called Microsoft Defender. It does things such as looks for excessive file uh, uh, deleting or sharing. And I've gone into my personal OneDrive and deleted a bunch of files and got a, you know notified from our IT department saying, hey, did you delete a bunch of files? And yes, I did. So there are flags that can be set to for specific actions which the bad actors use. And that's what advanced threat protection gives you. But enough about cybersecurity, which is one of our biggest focus at I3 Business Solutions. We're gonna wrap this up and thank Grace for an excellent overview. I learned a lot. I'm grateful. I'm gonna use forms. It's, it's, it's not that hard. Uh, and Grace, any closing comments? If you have any questions, feel free to contact me or Mike for anything after today. And if you want more information on i3, go to i3bus.com. Thank you for listening. Happy days. Bye-bye.